So this has led to the emergence and popularity of forensic accounting, whose initial purpose was to provide forensic evidence in the court against perpetrators of financial fraud. The field of forensic accounting and investigation is no doubt a popular area of concern for professional accountants. It is a multidisciplinary area requiring the knowledge of accounting, law, investigative skill, psychology, communication skill, and computer forensic to mention a few. So you can see here, when we are talking about forensic accounting, it draws from other professions, such as law, such as ICT, because from time to time, you need to investigate ICT fraud. Also drawn from areas such as um, investigative skills, psychology. Psychology is very important. Psychology is very important because you need to understand the frame of mind of the fraud star. Before we go, I'll just give you, I'll give you one overview, one illustration. From the public following, forensic accounting is a very broad area. Therefore, the purpose of this paper is to discuss the basic areas of concern in a forensic accounting investigation. So in auditing, evidence is what matters. Its conclusions are drawn from evidence. In the court, you cannot prosecute a fraud star or a fraud paper to commit fraud if you don't have evidence. So the duty of the forensic Accountant is to gather enough evidence in order that not only to prosecute the fraudster but also to recover assets, retrieve the assets stolen from wherever we, it was taken to. We're going to see the procedure. All right, from the Hunter and Spain, 2015, define forensic accounting as the action of identifying. Recording, setting, extracting, sorting, reporting, and verifying past financial data or other accounting activities for setting current or prospective legal issues or using such past financial data for projecting future financial data to settle legal issues. You can see forensic accounting is not only historical, it is also futuristic. Hence, the future can be projected from information, from data that have been gathered from the past activities. Concept of forensic accounting to forensic accounting, therefore, it degrades an, an, it degrades an understanding of accounting principles with investigative techniques to determine whether the actions behind financial record and statement are suspicious. Forensic accounting provides an accounting analysis suitable to be used in legal proceedings. Where you gather evidence and the evidence is not, cannot be used in legal proceedings, that such evidence is null and void. Forensic accountants are trained to look beyond the numbers and deal with the business reality of a situation. Forensic accountants analyze, interpret, and summarize complex financial and business matters. They may be employed by insurance companies, banks, police forces, government agencies, or public firms. I also add entities like Economic and Financial Crime Commission, ICPC, and all investigative bodies need the knowledge of forensic accountants. Forensic accountants compile financial evidence, develop computer applications, to manage the information collected and communicate their findings in the form of reports or presentation. Along with testifying in court, a forensic accountant may be asked to prepare visual aids to support trials, to support trial evidence. For business investigation, forensic accounting entails the use of tracing funds, asset identification, and asset recovery and due diligence reviews. So we want to look at type of forensic accounting. We have number one, investigative accounting. Number two, forensic investigation. Number three, forensic taxation. Number four, forensic audit auditing. 
Number five, digital forensic. Number six, fraud investigation. Objective of forensic accounting. Number one, to use forensic accountant conclusion to facilitate a settlement, a claim, or jury. Now, if there is any dispute, if the evidence you gather will help to resolve that dispute. Number two, to restore the downgraded public confidence. Anywhere you go to, you hear in the public sector that there is so much corruption, there is so much corruption. But where matters are properly investigated, the fraud has persecuted, confidence of the public will be restored. Then number three, to avoid fraud and theft. That is what is called deterrent effects. Deterrent effects, once one person is seen convicted or prosecuted, other people will be scared. Number four, to create a positive work environment. A lot of us as accountants, we are exposed to a lot of threats. I do not know your own. Because when you stand for what is right, the corrupt society will go after you. Hence, when people are prosecuted, you will be safe, you will be secured in your workplace. You will be free to express your opinion. You will be free to do what is right. Important of forensic accounting. Number one, complex litigation. Forensic accountant can lend a hand by deciphering complicated financial issues and relaying them in a way that both attorneys and their client can understand. This is because you are the only one who has the, finance, who has the capacity of understanding um, uh, financial language. So you are expected or can, you are required to be able to express this language in a manner that the solicitors, the attorneys will be able to understand. Government intervention investigations, forensic accountants' investigative abilities can be put to good use not only in standard civil disputes, but also in larger government investigations. Number three, to minimize losses or minimize losses. The primary benefit of strong forensic accounting is how it can help minimize and prevent unnecessary losses. Number four, prevention and risk management. Corporate entities and government agencies are increasingly turning to forensic accounting experts for assistance with preventive measures designed to keep fraud and the associated expense of the investigation process. And I want to add, it's not only government and corporate entities. Individuals can also benefit from this knowledge, from the skills. Individuals can benefit. All right, number five, reduce exploitation risk by proactively Patching any obvious gaps in current financial operational strategies or standards, the forensic accountant can ensure that the risk of future exploitation is significantly reduced. Differences between auditing and fraud, uh, and auditing fraud investigation and forensic accounting. We look at it from this point of view. One, auditing is a macro system. In contrast, forensic is a microsystem. Auditing is the mother, mother all of them, of all of them. While forensic is the product, a child of auditing. Auditing encompasses all of them. But forensic narrows down. What is the difference is the depth of investigation, the depth of investigation. Auditing does not entail so much detailed investigation. Whereas the forensic accounting entails up to the minutest uh, investigation, that will enable you to satisfy the lawyers in court. Because you're going to face the lawyer, you're going to testify in court. Once you are forensic expert, you are expected to gather enough information in order to justify your investigation. Number two, the auditor can analyze financial statements prepared by the manager and give an opinion based on documents which are given. I think all of you know, auditors express opinions on reports that are presented by directors. Those opinions, you are not an angel or spirit to know those opinions. That means the opinions are expressed by the 
arrangements. But for that thing, let's start. Don't teach into those opinions. Look at the psychology. Look at the feelings, the things that happen, and then use those things to, to make their opinions. On the other hand, for anything that can be whistle blow, red lamp issue, and uncover fraud, even when there is no sign of fraud or immaterial evidence. Sometimes those evidence are clouded. You know, these are criminals. Criminals are very intelligent set of people. They are human beings walking around with people. So they try as much as possible to cover up any trace of criminal activities. Hence, for anything will look at the body language and of course be able to detect where nothing is safe. Alright. I will spend time discussing this area. So let us part and explain the difference so that we can save time. There are areas I need to emphasize. What who is a forensic accountant? If I should say you are the forensic accountant, have you been trained? Have you gone through the examinations and have qualified and have been inducted as the certified national accountants, you are that forensic accountant. You are that forensic expert. And that is why this training is organized for you. So, okay, let me not go back. And I said the forensic accountant draws on various resources to obtain relevant financial evidence and to interpret and present this evidence in a manner that will assist both parties. Concept of forensic evidence to forensic accountant skills. In order for you to function as a forensic accountant, you need to acquire some skills. You need to acquire some skills. It's not something you get overnight. Hence, you need good analytical skills. You need creative thinking knowledge of the legal environment, problem-solving competence, investigative flexibility, oral and written communication skills, then practical business experience. Now, as professional accountants, it is expected that you look beyond and see what other people cannot see. That is the difference between you and the rest. You see what others don't see. There are times they present financial reports to you just at a glance. You should be able to discover that things are not right. The situation you see, you discover things are not right. I'll give you a characteristic of a froster. A froster is a gentleman. A froster is a very intelligent man. Well behaved, well loved. The reason is that you want to earn your confidence. There is a story of a young man who, who was on his service, who was such a nice man, well behaved, well loved. Every lady in that organization was always sending that young man on errand. He never kept that change. He would always go, go and buy food for me, he would go. Go and do this for me, he would do. Everybody loved this young man. He was so nice, well dressed. Nobody could understand or know this man was a frost star. So, carelessness on the boy, I mean on the boss, because of the confidence, the boy capitalized on it and committed online fraud. It was a very difficult matter for investigators to defend, to know. And he took knowledge of a forensic accountant. This knowledge is hinged on the fact that somebody cannot just be good for nothing. When you see somebody who is extra good, please be careful and be watchful of his behavior. There is an ulterior motive. He took that understanding for that point to be known. How did they know him? Because he never, he pretended he didn't know anything about computer. He pretended that he had never known computer before in his life. He took a situational analyst, forensic expert. They called him and asked him, which village are you from? They went to the town, to the streets and began to interview people about it. It was in the course of interviewing that man because they went to a computer center in the street he was living and they asked. In that street, he was, they were told that that guy is an expert in computer. That gave a clue to the understanding of that situation. 
ordinary, ordinary man will not reason that way. Forensic experts will reason that way. All right. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I, I have this is a very interesting, wonderful course. I wish I was here yesterday so that we maximally utilize it. Okay. <laughs> it's so sweet. I don't want to just. <laughs> okay. So please, this paper is in the PowerPoint. And the soft copy will be made available to you so that you can avail yourself. Please don't go without collecting a soft copy. I am sure the organizer will send to you. All right, so we move very fast because time is not in our favor. So we don't go above this. All right, knowledge of forensic accountant. I have explained that. From time to time, the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria organize, organizes training for you to equip you, to keep you up to date of activities in the world. The world is growing, is growing very fast. That is why, as a provisional accountant, at least once in a year, you're supposed to be attending this kind of programs. It's well prepared. So you need to understand the court and dispute. You also need to understand bankruptcy, reorganization, computer forensic analysis, economic damages calculations. You also need to know family law, business valuation, financial statement misinterpretation. This time, how do people misinterpret financial statement to suit their purposes? Special areas of forensic investigation, money laundering. Please, that is money laundering. Is um, wrong spelling. Money laundering. I think we said what is money laundering. The money, the asset, the money acquired through illegal means, the person who committed it will always want to bring it back into the financial system to make it look real. So that it will both with cash, both the number of houses he has. That process is what is called money laundering. Washing of illegally acquired money. That can only be done when that money is taken into the banking system. Once it enters the banking system, it becomes a legitimate money. So you need that on the understanding. No? So the term money laundering described, let's go forward. Okay, placement. This is the first stage in the washing cycle. The first thing in the washing cycle is called placement. Placing that money in the bank. They will do everything possible. Remember that sometimes this could be a racketeering process, a syndication, where it's not only one person. They involve a lot of people. Hence, as an accountant, you need that to acquire that skill. All right, we go forward. Stages of money laundering. Number one, integration, justification. They want to integrate the money into the legal system and make it look real. They want to justify that they are real owners of that money. Number two, uh, integration, that is investment. They want to invest that money. They can buy shares. They can buy all manner of things. Bitcoins and all the things they can do with that money. And of course, that is why the world is clamping down on Bitcoin because most of the London money are invested in that area because it doesn't have any control. Asset tracing and recovery. Now, one of the very important responsibility of a forensic accountant is asset tracing. Asset acquired must be traced, recovered, and returned to the legitimate owners. In most government fraud, the asset belongs to you, belongs to me. It must be recovered and returned to them. Asset can be traced across boundaries. It can be traced for the government, corporate organizations, and individuals. It, also, it is also seen as the process of conducting financial investigation to determine the rightful owner of assets and examining revenue generated by criminal activity by following its trail. I think we know what is called audit trail. Audit trail represents the trail, the process, the, 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 the pathway through which financial transactions have taken place. Purpose of asset tracing, number one, this, 
Okay, now let me not go into that. Asset tracing for prosecution, number one. Asset tracing is for prosecution. Number two, for um, confiscation and replacement. Special areas of forensic investigation. Number one, sources of information for asset training. Number one, criminal complaints. Complaint by you. Complaint by um, um, anonymous bodies. Financial intelligence unit. Okay, sir. Thank you. I'll soon run. Financial intelligence unit, civil or administrative proceedings, spontaneous disclosure, auditors, whistleblowers, media and civil society report, asset and income declaration by public financial officials, such as code of conduct uh, bureau, proactive investigation, forensic investigation process. Number one, uh, let me not go into those details. Stages of forensic investigation. Number one, initiation of a case. A case must be initiated. Number two, case evaluation. You have to evaluate the case, whether it is a legitimate case or not. Number three, solvability factors. Are these cases capable of being resolved? Number four, goal setting and planning. Number five, investigation. Then initiation. I don't need to go into those things. I'll just explain them in details. So forms of evidence, like we said, evidence is critical, is crucial in any audit opinion, in any forensic investigation, evidence is important. We have what is called real evidence, we have what is called demonstrative evidence, and we also have what is called testimonial evidence. Testimonial evidence is evidence that somebody goes to testify in the court. When a person goes to testify in the court, that is what is called testimonial evidence. You also have real evidence. Real evidence is the one that has tangible, physical things that can be seen, that can be documented. Demonstrate, demonstrative evidence. This is a tangible item that can that illustrate some facts. Foreign evidence gathering procedures. Number one, confirmation. Number two, observation. Number three, physical examination. Number four, performance. Number five, analytical procedures. Number six, inquiry of the client. Number seven, documentation. All these are procedures even in audits. There are procedures that exist. Sources of evidence in forensic investigation. We have mentioned sources of evidence before. Evidence gathered from both public and private sources. Government agencies, integration and border crossing authorities, customs, tax authorities, auditing agencies, real property and vehicle registrars, and etc. Court records. So we also have conclusions and recommendations. Like I said previously, the importance of forensic accounting cannot be overemphasized. As professional accountants, you are required to also have robust knowledge of forensic accounting procedures. That is why I am full of praises for the organizers of this program and for the team. No better time for this team than here because we just came out of the COVID-19 era and the COVID-19 era has restricted transactions. No more physical movements, but what is done is online transactions. Now, online transactions are filled with scams, are filled with a lot of fraud. How do you cope with that when you don't have this knowledge? Therefore, I challenge you, our professional accountants, the newly inducted members, the old members of Anand family, I challenge you to praise up. The world expects so much from you. The society expects so much from you. Government expects so much from you. And therefore, you cannot afford to fail. Thank you so much. God bless you. Please celebrate him. Dr. Abdullahi, Mr. Abdullahi, your CNA. Delivering a paper on forensic accounting and investigation. Distinguished professional colleagues, guests, ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, 
It is my esteemed pleasure and honor to invite to the podium the chairman of the Spinning Committee and council member, Chief Peter Ayanwo, FCA. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mother. We're so sorry for the time. Please, it's very important, as you said. They are listening to you. For anything, I can tell you, it's very, very important to our profession, to the nation. It's not more like audits again. Yes, not more audits, but now for anything, I've come to stay. And it's good that you go home, study the Study it very well. You have the study pack there. Look at it and study it very well. Please, because of time, I don't know if we can entertain only one question. Or do we make it two? Can we get them one or two? No question. God bless you. God bless you. That means you have understood all. Clap for yourself, my new notices. Lovely, lovely. Don't worry, we have no more rooms. Please, can we hand over to the work? Mr. Coach Girls, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving forward in the order of programs. It is my esteemed pleasure and honor to invite to the podium for the next paper on sustainable reporting and investor confidence to be delivered by a very seasoned intellectual research persons, Dr. Luca Medafia. CNA, you're welcome to Please, a warm welcome for Dr. Luca Milafia. Celebrate please. The Association of National Accountants of Nigeria uh, for giving me this opportunity to interact with you. Uh, permit me to stand on existing protocols um, and I also want to appreciate all of you for creating this time and uh, I hope that uh, we will have a fruitful uh, interaction. Uh, I want to say that I will be as brief as possible uh, because I am aware that time is of the excess. The subject of discussion is sustainability reporting and investor confidence. This is a very, very topical uh, issue and uh, it's good for us to appreciate one thing, the essence of sustainability. Now, if you are into a project and that project is not sustainable, then it may not stand the test of time. Imagine a situation where you place an order for a Cadillac car uh, 2020 edition. I think they call it 65 or so. Very beautiful car, very solid car. You place an order for it, and uh, maybe from the U.S., and it, uh, it is meant to be shipped to you in Nigeria. And you were given the picture and specifications of the car. Upon arrival, you now notice, after unwrapping it from maybe the container or whatever, you now notice that it is what I describe as an Elizabeth, Elizabethan Jalopi Moto. You know there's a difference between a car and, and a motor. I'm sure you appreciate my point. We will not waste time into that. 
But the point I'm making is that there's what you can call a car, but it may not be able to take you to a destination. Okay? So, this kind of scenario is what investors suffer when uh, beautiful reports are presented, but the firm suddenly does, or you now realize that what is painted as the performance of that organization in reality is not so. So these are this calls for concern. And a lot of companies uh, have failed over the years. A lot of companies have failed over the years. And because of this uh, failure, uh, it does not augur well to the whole uh, situation. Now, companies like Aeron, Walcom, Parmalat, they all had very beautiful reports. But all of a sudden, they failed. Aaron, for example, was reporting very high profits. Even the share prices were very, very high. Very high uh, figures. But all of a sudden, within one year or two, the company collapsed. That's a sign that the, the, uh, there were actually a lot of things that were not revealed. Um, we have, as you can see the content there, we have already established the, the introduction, but it's good for us to identify one thing, that there's a dwindling trend in the gap between uh, organizational corporate reporting and the actual survival of farms globally. And that is what we have to, we, we try to establish in the analogy that I've given. So the firm needs to survive. But the reporting that is presented, does it reflect or does it give the direction of the performance of the firm? Will it survive in the near future? So the, 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 the good thing is that sustainability reporting helps you to go beyond and identify certain uh, uh, factors that could enable or to give you confidence that this financial statement is a true picture and it actually convinces you that this organization will survive over, will survive over time. So over the years, organizations provide beautiful financial reports, uh, yet they failed. Investors are bound to have high interest and expectation in the contents of reports, especially during times of uh, crisis such as now, the pandemic situation, and so, forth, and so on and so forth. So it confirms why sustainability reporting is quite apt at this time. Uh, in view of its content, which include three things, environmental, socioeconomic, and governance uh, disclosure. So these are the three aspects that actually address this issue of uh, sustainability. Such details have the potentials to give investors a clearer picture of the direction of performance of the organization. Um, we, there are some aspects, you will excuse me, for, I mean, because of time, I may not deal so much on them, but I want to emphasize on the key things. You have the materials already, and uh, uh, at least you have the hard copy, I believe, so uh, you can digest it uh, further. So uh, you will excuse me if I actually skip one or two things. Uh, so um, corporate reporting is more or less a holistic affair. And uh, it's actually a broad term used to qualify different reporting in terms of presentation and disclosure of both financial and non-financial activities, which is actually made available to users. So, who are those users? The users include, uh, they, could, they could include management, customers, investors, government, uh, rating agencies, and uh, lenders. So the list is not exhaustive. So these investors are a very, very important 
category of users of this financial statement. And there is a need to present the accounts in such a manner or to, a realistic, to create or present a realistic picture to the investors. And if the investors are convinced that that picture is realistic, then they will, it will definitely enhance their confidence. So the key components of corporate reporting include financial reporting, integrated reporting, and sustainability reporting itself. Then you have uh, corporate responsibility, uh, responsibility reporting, uh, as well as corporate governance reporting. Some of them are actually uh, interwoven under this uh, sustainability reporting. So uh, we will not bother too much about this, but let's look at some of the key driving forces that warrant response, uh, sustainability reporting. One of uh, uh, a key author by name Teotio in 2020 identified some key driving forces. One of such forces is uh, on the aspect that social impact in sustainability reporting is more important than ever. The, 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 what it now means is that people have come to a, rea a realization of the fact that there is a strong need for uh, ESG reporting, for example. So by ESG reporting, we are referring to environmental, social, and governance uh, uh, disclosure. So you, the, the other aspect is that financial, financial reporting has become a significantly relevant aspect of sustainability reporting. So uh, that one we cannot, it's a, it's a fact that uh, it's very, very important, very significant. Then due to the severe economic downturn, investors are demanding complete transparency, reliability, and consistency in company records. So a lot of things, a lot of events have occurred in recent time. And uh, there is a lot of adjustments by organizations in short, by all and sundry. And so investors don't want to invest in the wrong places or leave their investment or maintain their investment in a place or in an organization that suddenly they will hear some stories. So they are now becoming more conscious. And uh, 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 that calls for uh, the fact that we should acknowledge that. Now, investors, stakeholders, and experts are more interested on upcoming sustainable reports than ever. I think still talking about the same thing. Now, uh, what are some of the benefits of sustainability reporting? One of such benefits is uh, uh, specifically some identified benefits. Um, okay, let me say it arouses the interest of users, especially investors. So that is one benefit. It arouses the interest of users, particularly the investors. So if you have a reliable report and it's a comparison, then the investors' confidence will, will definitely be enhanced. And they will want to stay in that investment. Or the potential ones will want to go into the investment. And it also it enhances a high level of transparency and dialogue. Uh, that is very, very clear. Then. Uh, it brings about trust and reputation, and reputation to the product or brand. So whatever business the organization is into and whatever it is producing, of course, this uh, sustainability reporting will actually uh, encourage uh, patronage in, in the kind of products they deliver. Um, it enables comparability and benchmarking. This is also, I think, very clear. Uh, you'll be able to reliably compare between uh, reports of different organizations and so on and so forth. And then if there is any standard, then you'll be able to compare based on those standards. It gives broader vision and strategy on sustainability. So it, it, there will be a clear direction concerning uh, the uh, sustainability of the firm. So it demonstrates commitment to sustainability. It also reveals weaknesses and strength of the organization. So you'll be able to see 
which areas the organization is strong and which areas uh, the organization is weak, especially when you don't just focus on the financials. You now look at the non-financials and then you'll be able to have a very clearer picture. Um, uh, it also provides leadership and comp competitive advantage, especially for those organizations that are fully complying with sustainability reporting. And then uh, it also improves management systems, internal processes, and set goals. Um, there's a sustainability reporting framework that takes care of certain standards and provides guides, guides, or let me say kind of guidelines on the reportage of uh, sustainability, so sustainability reporting. And so uh, in that uh, situation, you have different rating agencies, different organizations that have brought out guides. And so these guides may be peculiar to certain industries or businesses or reporting, uh, let me say, uh, the, in short, the kind of organization. So uh, one of them is what they call CDP, Driving Sustainable Economies. There's the Dojo Sustainability Indexes. There, there are Global Reporting Initiative, Global Real Estate Sustainability Benchmark. And then there's also Sustainability Accounting Standards Board, and so on and so forth. And the list is actually not exhaustive. But there are several others, but these are a few that we have uh, presented here. But the most important thing that we just need to note is that is the, those uh, uh, different uh, frameworks actually uh, represent or include some kind of indexes, if you like, that will help in assessing the reporting process of the organization. Now, there is... Uh, international compliance with sustainability requirements. Now, we just want to identify countries that are doing well when it comes to sustainability reporting. And one of them is, uh, uh, one of such countries include United States, uh, China, India, the UK, the European Union in general. Now, I'm sorry, those of you at the other end, I hope you are following us. Are we together? Yes. Thank you very much. I want everybody to be carried along. So, um, so, so most of these countries have tried very well in their disclosure with respect to sustainability uh, reporting. Uh, the European Union, for instance, had issued a directive on disclosure of non-financial diversity information in 2013. And then China, too, has been making a lot of efforts in terms of regulations and, and so on and so forth. Then the United States uh, Security, uh, Securities and Exchange Commission also has provided for listed firms to disclose their environmental compliance expenses. It appears that besides the aforementioned few, Countries identified, the mentioned few countries identified, most countries merely, or let me say, are merely involved in voluntary sustainability reporting. Uh, but I, I, of recent, I know there are recent developments, and we are going to see even Nigeria is becoming, beginning to initiate some efforts to the Security and Exchange Commission uh, towards ensuring that. Firms in Nigeria begin to fully comply. And we're not saying that there is no compliance at all. But over the years, especially in Nigeria, the level of compliance to sustainability reporting is voluntary. So it's just merely voluntary disclosure. And, uh, but there is a need for a very strong regulatory framework that can guide firms and ensure that they properly report such, uh, you know, in, in the case of uh, Code of Corporate Governance, for example, we can appreciate the fact that there are clear structures on ground. And this thing came up when Aaron failed and then uh, the Sabans Oxley Act was formed 
in the United States after a, after a deliberation by the United States Congress. And then they brought out certain measures. And this uh, led to strengthening of corporate governance in Nigeria. And so we also advocate that uh, this sustainability reporting needs to have a very strong framework too that can uh, lead to its being strengthened. So uh, we just want to have a synopsis of sustainability reporting in Nigeria. Although the response to sustainability reporting in Nigeria is low, as we have already established, it is obvious in view of the fact that there had not been any regulatory guideline or monitoring until recently. A recent study by Owolabi, Akimumi, Adetula, and Uwalomwa, 2016, assessed sustainability reporting in Nigeria, Nigeria industrial goods sector using content analysis such as GRI G4 reporting guidelines. And what are the findings? The study revealed that Lafarge Africa PLC scored only 15% disclosure on environmental issues, which is far below average. This may not be uncommon to most listed firms in Nigeria. However, since there had been a regulatory lacuna, the poor sustainability performance over those years cannot be sanctioned. So there's a synopsis also, uh, I mean the other aspect of the synopsis is that in recent time there has been efforts by regulators to ensure that Nigerian firms follow trends uh, in such reporting by responding to this phenomenon. And in this regard, the Security and Exchange Commission of Nigeria is said to have approved the sustainability disclosure guidelines issued by the Nigerian Stock Exchange. That is to tell us that Nigeria is already making an effort. So by this development, all listed companies in Nigeria are encouraged to adopt the practice of sustainability reporting with effects from January 1, 2019. So the main trust of the guidelines is aimed at promoting environmental, social, and governance principles. That is the ESG that we're talking about, which can facilitate engagement between investors and listed companies. The NSC believes that a sustainable global involvement in the Nigerian stock market necessitates a shared framework of ESG principles with multi-stakeholder approach and metrics. So, uh, so um, before we conclude, I want to just identify one thing. And the, the question is, how do we now enhance investors' confidence? One of them, even though it's not in the slide, uh, it's good for us to identify it. One of them is keeping investors updated. The investors need to be updated through effective communication. And that will boost their confidence. Another aspect is the preparation of financial reports with full compliance. If organizations prepare their reports and comply with sustainability reporting disclosure, especially in line with the ESG uh, factors, then it will boost investors' confidence. Another third point is the aspect of broader reporting, which creates more confidence. In other words, the reporting needs to always be encompassing. This is in line with the earlier two points. Now, the fourth point is sanctioning of defaulters for non-compliance. But the issue of sanctioning cannot be there if there is no guideline and regulation concerning it. So before you sanction, you must put a rule. And it is only when that rule is violated that you sanction. Now, what the Security and Essence Commission is, is doing so far is a step, it's a good step in the right direction. Now, the, the last point is a reward system or a form of 
regulation, regulation uh, sorry, a form of uh, recognition for compliance. Now, what it now means is that it is good to recognize organizations that are making very good efforts, and those efforts are very, very clear in terms of uh, compliance. Now, you sh there should be a reward system as well as a punishment system for everyone. So for those ones that are doing well, find a way of encouraging them and acknowledging it. And for the early ones, we should find a way of punishing them. So if they are punished, so there should maybe by way of fines or, or some other ways. But if the point is that if they are properly punished, then investors will believe that yes, there is proper regulation and there is no decorum and order. So uh, to conclude, uh, it's worthy of note that the importance of such reporting cannot be underscored because of its uh, potential to boost investors' confidence. During the time of pandemic, such as the world we are facing now, uh, is the, uh, actually, uh, such as COVID-19, for example, uh, actually provides for, I mean, shows that there are some, some temptations that prepare us, some temptations that prepare us of reports, including management to be involved in creative accounting and the dressing of figures. When certain things are not well, are not doing well, there is that temptation that you want to beautify the figures, you want to be, be involved in cosmetic dressing of figures so that people will see and say, this organization is doing well, whereas it is actually not doing well because those figures do not reflect the reality. So, uh, so, there, so this calls for this kind of attention, but uh, with a sustainable report, the investors may look beyond the traditional numbers and develop more level of confidence when the environmental, social, and governance factors, that's ESG, are disclosed. It is pertinent for investors to sometimes look beyond the usual old traditional accounting numbers and rely on the non-financial, financial as well as environmental outputs of an organization to gauge the reliability of such uh, firms. Uh, other countries, Nigeria inclusive, also need to follow suit by institutionalizing the reportage of some fundamental environmental and non-financial disclosure through or via making it mandatory through laws and related policies. The dynamic and challenging times is a clarion call for management of businesses, regulatory agencies to make it a duty towards ensuring that all businesses should engage in sustainability uh, reporting in line with international best practice. Finally, listed firms in Nigeria should comply with the Nigerian Stock Exchange Guideline for sustainable for sustainable reporting, which in turn should be reviewed every four years, should be reviewed every four years in order to abreast with, I mean, to be abreast with uh, current realities. If such and more have been complied with, and if there is a willingness by organizations all over to comply with uh, the disclosure of ESG, then definitely the nation will be a better place and the world the entire globe will be a better place. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please celebrate this distinguished intellectual once again. This is Dr. Luca Malafia giving you a very beautiful presentation on sustainability reporting and investor confidence. I will hear my call on the chairman of the committee, Chief Peter Ayao, FCNA, to give an analysis of the paper. The work of Thank you. Well, I'm handling very well. I'm assistantly reporting. I don't know. Can we can we go straight to questions? So, sustainability reporting is very important. You don't just report. You just bring up a financial account. It's not important. You have to you have to be very thorough on your reporting. 
So I don't know why we can't ask questions. So if you bring up a practical issue here, you can do it you can report immediately. Eh? Okay. And I know that the Fortis are eagerly, eagerly to meet the president. Please, I need a question, one or two. Yes, we have a question from the audience. Sustainability reporting and investor confidence. Please, kindly step forward by introducing your name and your membership number. Please, the hand at the right side. Your name and your membership number, please. And your branch. Good morning, sir. Good morning, colleagues. I'm Mr. Prince Tanda. My number is four zero one one one. I am from the branch. I want to ask: since we've lectured, we've had the lecture on sustainability reporting from Anna. We've known the importance of it in the economy, to the society. What is a body like uh, Anna, an accounting body? What are the values you're putting in place to see that? These measures are upheld with the SEC, Security Exchange Commission, to see that things are being done well in our financial environment because there are a lot of failures we find in the financial sector. And uh, professional bodies like ANA, ICA are not helping matters, I would say so. So please, what are the measures we are putting in place to see that these uh, measures are put in place with the government bodies? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, the question, please. The question is, what is Anna, a professional body, putting in place with the government bodies like SEC and others to see that this is actually a reality and not just so that the economy will be efficient? Any other question? In the absence of any other question, we'll go forward to the resource person to deliver a resource. Please, help us understand the question. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, what I want to say is that uh, the Association of National Accountants, through the research and technical committee, is doing a lot of things, not just in accounting or financial reporting, you know, but holistically in terms of the economy, uh, fiscal policies, and all that. So they review trends within the economy, both local and international. And as they do that review, they express their view or provide technical advice or information to the management, I'm talking about to the council of ANA. And it is based on that, that ANA now can wage in. So uh, the same thing concerning this, this is well noted, and uh, I believe that uh, the research and technical committee can also be looking at how we can make this thing. And I also want to say that ANA has a representation in the financial reporting council, and I believe that we know the role of the financial reporting council. And so, uh -huh. so it's an it's, it's, a, it's Anna that is chairing the, the the financial reporting council. And so, some of these policies will have to be input needs to be gotten from the financial reporting council as well. So that is to tell you that Anna is strategically placed. And its role is not just one aspect, but holistically. So I believe that these are some of the things that Anna will consider. Thank you. Well, it's sort of great, Anna. Anna, possible to the rest of the 
the, the chairman of the financial reporting council of Nigeria, and that should tell us the damage strikes Anna has made in the area of sustainability reporting, practicing technical standards in Nigeria and Africa. Mr. Bridget, professional colleagues, yes, ladies and gentlemen, what do you call the program? The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Information, in most states, Pakistan Lady, Obia Yeni, Ongoezi, and Majobi, to the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Information, in most states. Please, wherever you are now, we celebrate you. You're welcome. Thank you. I wish to call on the Chairman of the Committee, Council Member, Chief Peter Ayala, to give us some information. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Please, uh, first, I want to apologize for what happened yesterday. Our public system <coughs> is unfortunate. Our arm blood and uh, we couldn't continue. But I pray that today will be better and we are closing early. Basically, I want to talk to the Nuni Dottis. Nuni Dottis. You will soon meet the president. But the way you are, the way you are sitting and the way you are looking, are you are you sure you want to enter this organization association? Well, you know, after today, you retire back to your various states. You must participate fully. Am I communicating? You must participate fully. In fact, you are very lucky to be here today. And you are very lucky you have the privilege to join this association. You carry our flag wherever you are going. And also, it's important for you to study your manual. And again, for your information, every year it is compulsory, it is mandatory, you must attend MCPD. Am I communicating? And you must register in your various branches. Go back to your states, register in your various branches, pay the normal dues and the levies so that you will be considered a member. And by special case, between now and seven years, some of you will be fellows. Is it not? But you cannot sit here to be fellow now. You have to participate. So we want you to participate, carry our flags. We will soon meet the president. Thank you. Let's celebrate the chairman of the subcommittee. committee. of the various uh,
Good point. Good morning, sir. All glory to God, in the of God. The senior colleague, I'm uh, at ABC Julius Adediti. I'm an assistant chief accountant. I work in the Federal Committee. I'm representing the A. The topic before me is digital accounting and financial challenges. Let me quickly summarize something about digital accounting and emerging challenges. When we are talking about digital accounting, we are purely talking about preparation of an accounting through computer system, removing the manual way of presentation. It's a process whereby computer is used to prepare an account. You will agree with me that during the period of COVID-19, if you are a professional accountant and you are not digitally inclined, you are out of the system. You have the challenges that you may not be able to be relevant in your office. By the time the junior ones in the office were being called. You may not be ready for it at all. Because of our time, I like us to understand that every accountant will be able to agree with me that you should be able to be able to handle computer, be able to prepare spreadsheets by using of Excel and other packages through the use of computer. If you are not, you are out of the system. Now, let's look at this model. As a professional accountant, that your service is needed in an organization. Now, if you are a professional accountant and your service is needed in an organization, you should be able to be use computer. Now, if you can't be able to use computer, you are out of the system. That is for the day. Is your service needed as, an, as a professional accountant in the office? If yes, you are a digital accountant. If no, why? Because you are not computer literate. You can't use computer. Then you are not ready for it. Two, an accountant who is looking for relevance, if you want to be relevant in the office, and you want your job, you want to become a boss in the office, you must be computerly inclined, ability to be able to use system. If you can be, if you cannot, then your service may not be needed. Now, let's look at the challenges. The challenges are the issue of staffing. What is staffing? Staffing is a process of using appropriate, having appropriate qualification and experience. Now, you may have appropriate qualification. You may not have the experience. Having another certificate is one, is a qualification. But what is the experience? Experience that if you can be able to be versatile, be relevant in the office, you are a good staff. You have the qualification and you have the experience. Two, association plan. What is succession plan? Succession plan is about replacement of planning, strategic passing, ability to be able to be a leader who is a coach. Now, if you are an accountant and you are not a coach, you can't pass what you know to others. Then you may not be needed. Thank you. Then cyber security. Now, if you are an accountant in an organization now, we need some, they need somebody who is critically and be able to sensitively protect their information during pandemic. If you are an accountant, a, a professional accountant that is not sensitive, be able to do things by yourself with the use of computer, you are not to be fitting into the system. 
and by this your job may not be needed. Thereby, during pandemic, some boss were what their service were not needed. If they need retrenchment, if they want to do retrenchment, even though you are a professional accountant, but you are not fitting into the system by being digitalized, then your job may not be needed. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the day. The day is next. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. The executive here. Uh, the executive uh, Strength and weaknesses within 
your, the organization an opportunity and trend that exists in the outside environment of the business. In this case, the organization must make all possible efforts to maximize its strength and an opportunity which exists within and outside by making sure that they are able to gain competitive advantage over others in the society. Integrated reporting will enable organized organizations to build confidence in its stakeholders. If you are able to provide value to the, to the stakeholders, definitely you have won their confidence. In the spirit of insecurity, it is only a value-created organization that can thrive because they will look at that organization as one that we cannot do without. Hence, the world is evolving. Recently, we are hearing of cryptocurrency, we are hearing of digital currency, which is about to be introduced by the central bank. We call it e -Nyron. As an encounter, it is pertinent for each and every one of us to get ourselves prepared at all times in order to be able to give We're going to go deep. Good morning, everybody. We look forward to your pleasure, representing Group D. Uh, my secretary is unavailable. She received an urgent call. So please pardon me. I'll be doing it alone. Okay, the topic before me is forensic accounting and investigation. When we talk about forensic accounting, this can be said to be as a process of utilization, utilizing accounting, audit, and investigation, investigation skill to tackle fraud, to tackle crime, to tackle all sorts of amenities in an organization. Likewise, you can say forensic accounting can be said to be as a process of using examination, using data to determine Missing money. That's just the lay that the, the simplest form of definition we can just give it. Using data to determine the missing money from an organization or from our institution. Yes, what are the types of forensic investigation we have? We have two. The first one, litigation support. Number two, investigation resolution. When we talk about litigation support, litigation support can be said to be as a module as a medium of getting more facts within the system to tackle investigation. Number two, the investigation resolution is a process by which you can you use your facts, you get your facts from the surround, from the vicinity of where you want to get the facts from. I mean, okay, this is our institution, or this is the organization we want to get the facts from. Okay, making use of the information you get within the environment to get your resolution. What are those places? Things to do to achieve your aim. Number one, map out ways of investigation you want to use. Which medium do you want to make use of? Are you going by the, by the litigation method or you are going by the investigation method? Number two, gather evidence to support the case you have. You need facts. You need real facts. Okay, as, a, as, a, as an investigation accountant or forensic accountant, you want to get facts. You want to present your case. How do I go about it? What are those things I need? You get the fact down before you can put, you can, before you can give any report at any court or any place where you want to go to present that. Number three, prepare the report adequately. You must be seated. Get yourself composed. Okay, what are those things I need to do? What is the topic before me? What am I, what am I trying to object? What, what am I doing? What do I want to present? How do I want to get the judge? Or how do I want to get the chief judge? How do I want to get them convinced that what I'm presenting to them is a fact as a forensic accountant? Number four, testifying in court. You need to get someone that is well to do it, that is ready to present your case, that, that is ready to testify when you get to the court. Okay. Something happened, an incident happened in this organization, and you are called as a forensic accountant to 
come and investigate this issue. Okay, what do you need? You do, you've done all your major things you need to do. You've done the reports. Now you have someone that is telling you, I can testify, but I'm scared. You need to do the need to do. Get someone that get him secured. Get officers to secure this person so that he can always walk to the court and testify. Uh, where and where? On what occasions do we need forensic accountants? When there is fraud, when there is crime, in conclusion before they collect the money from me. Important, likewise, the importance of accountants, of forensic accountants, it is for us to get the actual facts of what happened in an organization. For us to work against crime, to work against fraud, it can be also be used in court of law. When you have, as, an, as a forensic accountant and investigator, you have, when you have your facts, it can, your facts can be used in the court of law. In conclusion, I will tell you, as a forensic accountant and investigator, either you are, in front, you are in the audit department or you are in the accounting department, I can tell you, with that, you with in the accounting department or audit department or investigation department, you are all going to be in the Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, it is now left for the judges to now compile their data and give the final result. In every exam, you must have the successful ones and you must have those that didn't do well. Give us some minutes so that we compile our data. Thank you. Yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Before the results are out, can I ask the inductees, where are the inductees for today? Just be fast, change your seats. Change your seats. Um, my syndicate group, you have done well. And uh, it's a good start, especially the group D and group uh, C. I'm not ringing the election, no. but I know from what I saw, group A, group A, group C, group B, group D, they did very well. And uh, it's a good starting. It's a good starting. In, in this please, uh, judiciary, we are waiting for you, please, our judge. Our judiciary department, please come, come, come. We are waiting, we are waiting. We have just two minutes to round up. Two minutes, two minutes. Where is the group B? Group A. Come now. Please, please, bring it up, bring it up. Don't rig it, oh. I hope you're not rigging it. Bring it, don't rig it. Bring it. People are rigging it.
Huh? Wait, are you all in notice? My professional colleagues, see what I'm seeing here. The people that were in synthetic group are all in notice. Huh? They are all in notice. I'm very happy for that. Very good starting. attention please please can you listen here the result is out you know we normally join them with four basic four things appearance presentation time we have to time you i will not get the total so for group uh, we start from the 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 the, the fourth to the to the facts The fourth position came to group B. Where is group B? Clap for him. The fourth position. The third position came to group A. Group A, third position. The second position came to group D. And the first position came to group C. Please clap for them, clap for them. Before you go, we have something from the president for you. The first position, group C. Second position, group D. The third position, congratulations. And my brother, congratulations. Please, a round of applause for them. Mr. Bojkas, ladies and gentlemen, we have formally come to the end of the fourth session of Annan 2021 MCPD program in Enugu State. At this point in time, I wish to call on the a membership secretary of Annan, Alaji Ibrahim Husseini Gidado, FCNA, to formally begin the officiation of this program the orientation and induction of new members into the association. You're welcome. Please, a warm round of applause for Anand Membership Secretary, Alaji Ibrahim Hussein Negidado, as he steps forward to the podium, please. A council member, Membership Secretary of Anand. You're welcome, sir. Hello. Good morning. Chairman, MCPD Committee, Director of Education and Training, as Council Member, you are welcome, Ma. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations, our prospective inductees. Today is your day. We will soon celebrate you. Uh, I hope everybody has gotten the the odd form. Is there anybody without odd form? You don't have. Oh.
Can we settle down, please? Those behind, are you also inductees? Excuse me. Where are you going, madam? Okay. Do we have inductees in this room? So what are you doing with the old form? Okay. Please, non-inductees, go this way. And if you are inductees, please go and fill up this row and that row. I don't have bags as inductees. So these bags on chairs, please remove them and sit on them. Hello? Hello? So please, give us a moment. We are awaiting the arrival of the President and Chairman of Council. So please, just two minutes. Settle down, please. The moment the President arrives, we will start. Please applaud the president, a man who has worked tirelessly for the growth of Anna. Please the company of all the council members. Please let us assist as the president makes his way to the house. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. The second guest, ladies and gentlemen, with the arrival of the president, we will be taking the national anthem for the institution. Let's go out as we take the national anthem. to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. Amen. Shall we sit down? Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my step pleasure to welcome you to Annual 2021 Mandatory Continuing Professional Development Program, only here in the post district and the state. And the orientation and induction program scheduled to hold today. In establishing the protocols for education, it is my esteemed pleasure to 
We organize the presence of members of the Governing Council of Ireland, every led by the President and Chairman of Council, in person of the Reverend Canon, Professor Benjamin Chuka Osisioma, FCN. You're welcome, sir. I recognize the president presence of the representative of the executive governor of Enugu State, Sir Dr. Pascal Okoli, FCNA. You're welcome, sir. He is the special advisor to the governor on financial matters and former accountant general for Enugu State. The celebration, sir. I recognize the presence of the first vice president of Ireland. Of the treasurer of the association, in person of Dr. Babakide Awe Abou FCA, the one that we celebrate the membership secretary of Ali Al Haji Ibrahim Hussein the leader of FCA, the chief executive officer of Ali, Dr. Zumbi. Abba Abdullahi, MNI FCA, the World Council. Members of the Government Council here present, we are in our midst the Chairman of the Committee and Council Member Chef Peter Aya FCA, the World Council. We have here in our midst former Council Member. Welcome, Mrs. Morning, the book of Stanley, the world government. We recognize the presence of eminent personalities here present. The Chief Operating Officer of Anna, the person of Right Honorable Dr. Musa Ahmed Mohammed of Stanley, the world sir. The Chairman, Anna Advisory and Special Business Committee. Professor Pius Okoli, FCN, you're welcome, sir. Director Education and Training of Anand, Al Haji Raman Pedro, FCN, you're welcome, sir. We organize all the eminent personalities. We organize the past council member here in our midst, the person of Chief Mrs. Ungos. Ulo and Owen for FCA. You're welcome, man. At this point in time, it is my still pleasure to welcome you to this very important occasion. My name is Adenika Josinyolu and I will be here preparing for this occasion. At this point in time, I wish to most respectfully invite the membership secretary of the association, Al Haji. Ibrahim Hussein Ibidado to officiate the orientation and induction program and stating the modalities. You're welcome. Uh, our president, Reverend Canon Professor Benjamin Chika Osisioma, the SA to the governor, Dr. Pascal, the first vice president. The treasurer of the association, the chief executive officer, chief operating officer, chairman of NCPD and council member, past council members here present, past president here present, fellows, branch chairmen, other members, prospective inductees, good morning. Let me start by congratulating you and to say the decision you made in joining the accountancy profession is a good one and you will not regret it. You are coming into a family of 45,000 members, a family that is one, a family that is united, a family that is able to carry everybody along. Today is just the beginning of your journey. To do this journey, you need to equip yourself 
technically. To be an accountant today means a lot. You need to be that future-ready accountant. And what does that mean? You need to embrace technology, the new ways of doing things in accounting. Otherwise, you'll be left behind. In Anand, we do this type of program, MCPD, every year. It's our effort to make you become technically efficient. Every year, we take topical issues and bring everyday speakers to come and teach you. MCPD revalidates your membership every year. So it's mandatory. We do it in six political zones where you attend one. Be very active in your branches. Go back to your branches of your choice to register and be active. This has to grow in Anna. You have to belong to a branch, not necessarily your uh, state of origin. Two is your activity in branch that will bring you out in Anna so that you progress to be a fellow, to be an executive of the branch, to be a member of the Three, when you are a doctor today, you become a professional. A professional means there is a way of doing things. From the way you do your work, to your way of dressing, to even the way you eat. So in occasions like this, you need to come properly dressed. You either dress traditionally or corporately. And I hope you know what that means. And in also subsequent occasions, any MCVD, any meeting, any national conference, you need to be dressed properly. We don't wear anything in Anna. You do you dress the way you support the dress. I pray that the president will not see some of you not properly dressed and refuse to adopt you. So please, we take this very, very serious. Let me once again congratulate you in advance and to wish you a very, very fruitful career and sport. Thank you very much. Please celebrate the membership secretary of Iron. I'll allow you to join him and sing the video. A warm round of applause for him, please. At this point in time, on this auspicious occasion, permit me to invite to the podium the Chief Executive Officer of Iron, Dr. Kumubi Abba Dolai, MNI, FCMA, to deliver his speech for this occasion. Please, a warm round of applause for the CEO of Iron. First Vice President, Treasurer, Membership Secretary, other Council Members here present, CEO, sorry, CEO, and other Manager staff here, and uh, the Branch Chairman and his ESCO, other members, official members here, Perspective in the this, good morning. I wish to congratulate you for your journey to this level. Today, God willing, you are going to be transformed from ordinary accountants to professional accountants. I 
I wish to use this opportunity to bring to you some issues that are relevant to you when you become professional accountants as annual members. Particularly, you are linked with the Secretariat. First of all, we would like you to memorize your number. That is your identity in Anna. Whatever you want to correspond with Anna, either verbally or writing, you have to put your name and your membership number. That is the basis of recognition. Secondly, I would like to tell you that as members of Anna's, you are expected to always meet your financial obligation, particularly obligations that are mandatory on you. Subscription, which is due in January, and the mandatory continuing professional program, which is meant for members to attend at least one in a year. More so, I would like you to know the difference between accountant, professional accountant in training, professional, sorry, professional accountant in business, and professional accountant in practice. Today, when you become other members, provided you get out of this door, you are classified as account, professional accountant in business, referring to those who are in employment in private sector, public sector, education sector, and the third sector. That means you will continue to provide services to your employers and to the community through your employers as professional accountants. But that does not make you to be a professional accountant in practice. If you want to practice as a professional accountant, that is practicing directly, providing service to the community with a firm, where you put a firm of professional accountant, that is certified professional accountant, you have to undergo another process for intention. You have to go for intention for three good years as accountant training under a professional firm of accountant, recognized professional firm of accountant. And that has to be communicated to the secretariat so that we recognize that we are undergoing that process of training and we can monitor and supervise your internship over the period of three years. After which, we expect to receive a dossier or a report from your senior or your principal. And you will be invited for interviews or screening where you will have interaction with professionals to find your suitability of being a professional. If you are found to be suitable, then Anna will award you a certificate of practice, which will board certificate of, uh, of practice. That gives you the right to practice as a partner in another firm, but does not also give you right to open an office. For you to open an office, you have to get a license, practice license for the office. The practice license is awarded to the office. But before you get that, you have to meet the minimum requirement for practicing license. The firm will be inspected by our monitors to confirm that you have met the minimum requirement for an office of a certified national accountant. The requirement include number of offices you have space, number of personnel, number of computers, and others. Location of the office also matters because you are not expected to open an office in your home. It has to be in a business area. So when the office is found to be suitable for practice, then we award practicing license to the office. And that office would have been registered by you with the Corporate Affairs Commission as a firm of professional accountants. So then we give you a license. With that license, 
you can use your office and practice in that office. How can you communicate it? Failure which you would attract sanction. If you just, when you go out of here, you open an office and start to practice, that will attract sanction and that will lead to your expulsion from the association. So this is very important. You are also expected to align yourself with at least uh, to align yourself with a branch because Adam will only organize this through branch. You have to have a branch, whether in your place of domicile, your state of origin, or anywhere you find to be suitable for you. But you have to align yourself so that we can trust you through a branch for responsibility. It is through the branch that you can be identified as a source person, as a committee member, as a council member, and other things. So it is very important to do that. Please be conversant with the board of ethics of the profession. Because now you are bound to be monitored and supervised by the association, which is a self-regulatory entity. Where you preach our code, you are likely to face sanctions. So please get conversant with it, which is available to you. And as much as possible, but you need to continuously improve your competency so that you can give excellent service to your employers or if you are practiced to the community directly. So I think I will stop here because of brevity of time if we want to travel today. So we, I will stop here and the conversation will continue. When you change it to your address, either email or Physical quarter, please communicate to the headquarters. Thank you. Please a warm round of applause for the chief of the meeting of Zawahana. There you have it. Modalities for being members of Anand have been ruled out to you as new inductees. Mr. Pitch Gus, ladies and gentlemen, on this note, I wish to invite the membership secretary of Anand, the president of Alaji Ibrahim Hussein, the Bidado, FCNA. To formally present the inductees to the president of the association. You're welcome to uh, May I request all the prospective inductees to please rise? Uh, please, can we stop? The noise is too much, please. All prospective inductees to please rise. You have all touched your own form, right? Are we settled? Yes. Mr. President and Chairman of Council, standing before you are 651 in your teeth that we have found worthy to be admitted into the association. They are ready to take their own and be admitted into membership. Sir. Hello. Hi. Let me begin by congratulating you for coming thus far. But uh, nothing stops us from coming off the induction now and asking you to go and come back next time. <laughs> but we won't do that. We won't do that. Okay, do you have your photo of an address for? Please, what we say hi.
will duly observe the regulations and rules of the association for the time being in force. That I shall not use the professional designation of certified national accountant or such other designated letters denoting membership. That I will always conduct myself and carry out my professional duties in the best interest of the association and of the public. That I will not allow my personal interest to infect my professional conduct. All my professional judgment that I will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the fundamental objectives of the association as contained in the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria Act. Number 17. Of 1993, of 1993, that I will abide by the ethics of the profession, that I will do right to all members of the association, and obey all lawful instructions of the council of the association, that I will not directly or indirectly. For the discharge of my professional duties. So help me God. So help me God. I will write your name and sign before I do the last one. Right? Have you written your name? Yes. And you have signed? Yes. Okay. This one, you are not, you don't know what to say this one, don't repeat that one. By the powers conveyed on me.
Okay, sit down, sit down. If you don't listen, the president may decide to withdraw his oath. So please sit down. I congratulate you once again and enjoy you to listen attentively to what the president will say to you. You are now our colleagues. Congratulations. Please listen attentively to what the president will say to you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, boss, 
and then they professional. And then you came out on tops. <clears throat> you have had your practical experience, and today we are capping it off with your induction as a professional accountant. You are not now a nameless accountant without identity. You are a professional. Dress like corporate people. Nothing wrong with putting on 
traditional dress, but let it be complete. If you put on traditional dress, let it be with a cap. If you want to dress with a nobody cap, dress well. If you want to dress like, they don't dress like a uh, passenger among accountants. It doesn't help us. Remember they said that the way you dress is the way you get dressed. The way you carry yourself. When I was talking about those who start out at the same level, I just couldn't help but think of uh, His Excellency's presentative at this future. He was my student many years ago and he had classmates. I don't know how many of his classmates have come anywhere near to what he has attained in his working life. That's what it is like. You, God will grant you grace, but you have a duty to do. And as you strive, you'll be rising until you become the cream of the crop. And uh, my prayer is that you too will be the same. It will be the same among you all as you strive to rise. Let me also encourage us to look at Adam as a body and see what you can add to Adam. We have a vision. We have a mission. Look at the, look at the way our vision is crafted to make Anna a premium brand of choice in professional accounting practice in Nigeria and to impact on accounting education and practice in a profound and comprehensive manner. In other words, we are saying we want anybody who wants to choose between professional organizations. Do I go this way or that way or that way? We want the person to choose Anna. Why? We want to put certain things in place to make the person choose Anna. It's not a sentimental choice. It's an objective choice. If you do the right things, you will have the right decisions. And we're encouraging you to run on that lane. Look at our mission to advance the science of accountants in Nigeria, to pioneer a multidisciplinary emphasis in the production of well-rounded, well-blended, well-honed professionals. Professionals who have profound in knowledge skilled in practice and ethical in conduct. And I want to ask, does that describe you? If not, why not? These are the times for you to begin to decide where you want to go and how you want to get there. I will not call you with long stories. You have heard a lot in the days past. And I'm sure you will hear more in the days to come. But I will leave you with one charge. I read a story some time ago because it was a daily devotional. Daily bread. It was about a family. An American family. They had this pet. A beautiful pet. A little pet. The pet was so lovely. It had black and golden stripes. And the children of the family carried that pet, played with the pet, slept with the pet. When the pet came into their home, it was only about one foot big, 12 inches. But over the years, that pet began to grow and to grow and to grow until it became. 11 feet long. The pet is a modern python. Hello? Python from Boma. Half of what the pet was. But it still remember the pet. Until one day, the parents were out of the house. Nobody knew what had got the pet. It turned on the son of the family. There caught the boy and you know how my was came and strangulated him. By the time somebody called the police and the police arrived, the boy was dead. I'm not telling you a fable, I'm telling you a true story. What am I saying? 
watch the habits you form. When habits begin in our lives, they are cute, they are beautiful, they are attractive. But you see, we form habits, then our habits form us. After you have formed your habits, your habits will not form you. Take over your life. And watch what you allow yourself to form. Because one day, you could be a casualty of those habits that you have formed. As a professional, your habit should be to work hard, to play well, have a good family life, have your good relationship with your God. I was talking to young men, and I gave them what I call the four P's of success. I said, what is successful? Four P's. I said, the first one is providence. I call it the God factor. You can't take God out of the equation. The best things in life are gifts from God. The second P is purpose. There is a purpose for which God has created you. There's a purpose for which you are in an and at a time like this. When a man is not out the purpose for which God has made him, you will become front page news. If you don't, you will become a mere footnote in the business of history. There is a third one, purposeful service. Purposeful investment of energy. Don't dissipate your strength in things that don't give you dividends. Watch what you are involved in. Productive labor should be your goal. So apart from your goal, then productive labor should be what you are pursuing. And the final B is perseverance. Never give up. If you fall down six times, get up seven times. Keep on going on until you have achieved the goal that God has set for your life. Again, I want to go let you go. And I pray that perhaps a couple of years now, you'll be the people sitting on this seat. And my children will be sitting down there. You know, in my university, a couple of years ago, I called some of my younger colleagues who were just starting. I told them, I'm looking forward to the time when I will visit the university of Nigeria, not just the way university. Maybe I will just visit. And I said, who is the professor in the dean? They will mention me. I mentioned one of the small, small staff there. And when we read the dean, they are the dean now. They are the dean now. They have visited their top professors. And they are dean. One of them was a very young girl I knew in secondary school. I was already a young woman then. She started the professor and dean of my campus. You are the future of this association. My prayer is that you will hold this future with pride and don't let it fall to the ground. Once again, congratulations. Thank you very much, Mr. President. May I please seek the indulgence of Mr. President to call upon members of Membership and Privileges Committee for Recognition, sir. Yeah. Uh, please, while we are doing that, Mr. Isaac Morgan, one of the latest members of our 